This is a pair of English packing cases for a campaign chest. And we're very lucky that they retain their original campaign chest inside. We'll get onto that in a minute, but let's discuss the packing cases first of all, because they're a little bit unusual to most packing cases. Now we can see they have got mahogany fronts. Most packing cases for campaign chests have got painted pine fronts, very similar to the sides that we can see here and the top. After all, it was a secondary piece of furniture. This pair is a little bit different because of the mahogany showwood to the front. It's a much smarter piece of furniture when it's set up. And originally, it would have had a pair of cover boards that would bolt on to the front of each section. And at the top of each section, we have got set in fittings to take bolts to screw the covers to. Sometimes the covers then went on to become tables with screwing legs. Different makers did different things with them. Um, but the fact that they've got mahogany fronts is probably a key to their survival. Most pattern cases for campaign chests didn't survive once they reached home. The campaign chest inside would be given house space, perhaps in the spare bedroom, but the pattern cases, which essentially were just painted pine pieces of furniture, although very useful whilst campaigning, and they would give you a secondary piece of furniture known as a wardrobe, once you reached home, uh, you're not going to want a painted pine pattern case in any of the rooms. So they went into the outhouses and they were used in workshops and eventually they got, they got broken up and they got separated from the campaign chests within, uh, that they held within them. Um, and this is a great shame because normally most of the information pertaining to the campaign chest was on the pattern case. So um, originally the boards that would have gone on the front of here probably would have had the owner's name, regiment and rank painted on them. So they could be easily identified during travel. That information, of course, has gone with the boards. But also, quite often, the pattern cases would have the maker's details, whereas the campaign chest contained within wouldn't. So let's have a little bit of a closer look. So if we open it up, the top section, slide these catches here, we can see that the shelf for the wardrobes for the, the cases are stored up front against the drawers, the top half of the drawers, and the same with the bottom. And that's just to fill in the gap and to give another layer of protection. Now these chests and cases were made by Hill and Millard. If we're coming a little bit closer, hopefully you can see there the faint stencil for Hill and Millard. So I think the only thing to do now is to uh, take the chest out and set it up. And I'll speed the camera up for that so I don't keep you hanging around too long. All that remains for me to do now is to put the final shelf into the wardrobe. And we can see that there are slots cut out to the inside of the wardrobe. And the shelf slides in there nice and neatly. So we've got our two pieces of furniture. Our main piece of furniture, our campaign chest, and our secondary piece of furniture our wardrobe, giving lots of storage in our tent whilst we're on campaign. Now, Hill and Millard were great makers. Um, we've done other videos on them before, and you may remember a secretaire chest that we had not so long ago, a very nice example of a piece of campaign furniture by Hill and Millard. There's only really one more thing to show you with this chest, 
And that's the quality of a maker and their attention to detail. Because what they've done is, with the wardrobe, they have also supplied an extra bar just to finish it off to the front between the two sections, just to make it a little bit tidier and to flow as one piece of furniture. Now, if we lift this off, we can see that we've got two moulding bars. I'll leave that one in there, and this one's here. So we can see each section has got two lugs on it, and you would remove these during travel. We've got um, block feet on each wardrobe, just to make them easier to move about. And we want to tidy that up and put these in, just to finish it nice and easy. So that's uh, a good sign of the quality of a maker, and it's entirely what we would expect of someone like Hill and Millard, who were based at 7 Duncannon Street, Trafalgar Square. So, um, one other tip when buying campaign chests, if you're lucky enough to find one in its original pattern cases, is just make sure that the pattern cases are original. We've seen a few on the market where they obviously aren't. And the reason that you can tell is when the, pack, the campaign chest is inside the pattern case, it should be quite a nice tight fit. You've got to have a little bit of space just so that you can slide it in and out nice and easily. But we've seen campaign chests married to pattern cases where you've got a great big uh, two inch gap at the top and a two inch gap on the side. And that's just not going to work really. Originally, you wouldn't have had that gap. You don't want the chests inside the case moving around at all if you could help it. So it's relatively tight. So if you are um, lucky enough to find a campaign chest with its original pattern cases, be it with mahogany fronted drawers um, like this one, or the normal painted pine front drawers, just have a good check and uh, make sure that it's quite a, a tight fit so you know exactly what you're buying. So to sum up, we've got two pieces of furniture in one. We've got um, an English mahogany campaign chest, circa 1870 by Hill and Millard, and we've got its original pattern cases which stand out for having mahogany fronted doors to them. Um, would have been used by an army officer traveling uh, in Europe or possibly India at the end of the 19th century and uh, great to actually find the two of them still living very happily together.